I've talked about management and that management is how do I get the best out of my people, right? Anytime you coach, anytime you manage, etc., you are asking, how do I get the best out of my people? Why do we study business? Well, hopefully we study business so we can make people better managers, so that we can improve the workplace. This is a hope, at least, that we have, a naive dream, perhaps. I dared to dream, right? Uh, why business schools? <clears throat> Look, all that business schools do, this is all that we do in a business school, is we want to know why do some companies fail and some companies succeed? That's it. That is the sole purpose behind business schools. How is it that some companies fail and some companies succeed? Think about that for a, min for a minute. Why do companies fail? Why do companies succeed? Well, let's, let's look at that. Okay. The first thing we might say is, you know, let's look at their HR policies. So what is it about their hiring policies that have led them to be unsuccessful? Uh, a personal example, I've been fortunate enough to work in a couple firms, three firms that went bankrupt. All three of those firms, it was not because of me, please. <laughs> I was just one little cog in the wheel. Uh, I may have played a small, a small role in one of them, but uh, anyway, that's another story. Uh, I worked with three firms that went uh, bankrupt. In all three instances, they shared this, they shared this in, in, in common. This guy was really good at doing this job. So he buys a company that's doing this job. So I'll, I'll change the industry, et cetera. We'll say this guy was really good at car repairs. So he buys a car repair business. He's got a car repair business. What's his role going to be? Well, his role is going to be managing the car repair business. So he moves up to the office, and now he's got to hire someone. He's got to hire someone to do car repair. So he goes through a bunch of applicants, <clears throat> and he selects some, and they become his car repair people. Guess what? They're not as good at car repairs as he is. He's also not very good at management because he's never done it before. He's, he's a car repair guy. The people he's <clears throat> hiring that he's bringing into the company aren't very good at their jobs. And pretty soon, you had an organization that was populated with people who weren't good at their jobs from top to bottom. Well, how is it possible that this organization is going to flourish, let alone survive, right? Of course not. We could look at their HR practices. We could say, what is it about the compensation? What is, it, what is it about the people that they attract? What about the selection? What about the attrition, the people that choose to leave, right? You could look at the police force and say, how is it that uh, law enforcement has gone so sideways in the States? Well, let's look at their, who are the people that are attracted to the job? How are the selection? What's the training? Who are the people that leave? What are the incentives? It's all of these things, right? So we could attribute it to an HR problem. Therefore, we have a discipline called human resources, HR. You could also, we could also look at the companies and say, well, what about their accounting practices? You know, is there, are their accounting practices giving them success? Yes. In many instances, the difference between a successful company and a company that fails is their accounting practices. So we should study the accounting practices to find out what is the best way of doing accounting. So the accounting department looks at all of the accounting elements of companies to find out how is it that some companies go bankrupt and some companies prosper, flourish, right? We could also look at supply chain. How do supply chain practices allow some companies to flourish and other companies to fail? What is it about, you know, their agreements with manufacturers, with, with, between manufacturers and suppliers that allow them to achieve a competitive advantage, right? So Chevrolet used to have 100 suppliers for their vehicles. Toyota had five. Because Toyota had far fewer uh, relationships to manage, <clears throat> they, could, uh, they could achieve just-in-time delivery. They could also make smaller modifications. And it just gave them more flexibility. They had less pieces to put together. It's often said that a camel is a horse put together by committee. If you have a lot of different suppliers, you're going to end up with horses that look more like camels because you're managing all these. So we would have supply chain looking at 
How are these relationships being managed? What is the optimum way? Marketing can absolutely make or break you. People look at your brand, right? They look at your reputation, your trustworthiness. Is your product something that, you know, appeals to me? So we look at uh, marketing as a discipline, is a, a lens for looking at why do some companies survive and some companies thrive? Why do some fail, some succeed? We have the discipline of marketing to look at those factors. Finance, all international, management, all of these different disciplines that we have in, a biz in our business schools are simply asking one question. Why do some companies fail and some companies succeed? We probably know less than 40% why it is that some companies succeed and some companies fail. That's why we have researchers. That's why we continue to look through these, uh, through these different lenses to find out what combination of these factors and also these factors specifically, how they are able to translate to success or result in flavor uh, and failure. That is all that we do in business schools. How does culture give you a competitive advantage? That's one question, one way of looking at this thing. Why do some companies survive and some companies fail? All of our business schools are simply different angles that cut through this thing called organizations or companies or businesses. They're like a big onion. And each discipline takes a different section and looks at that element and says, OK, how does this one practice translate into success or translate into failure. The reality is we don't, know, we don't know that much about why organizations fail or succeed. I can certainly tell you how to make an organization that fails. That's far easier than telling you how to make an organization that will succeed and prosper. But when you go to a business school, you should understand that all of these disciplines, all of these perspectives are simply ways of asking or responding to this one fundamental question. Why do some companies succeed and other companies fail? That's what we do in business schools. That's what we look at. And because it involves people's lives and families and relationships, it should be looked at very carefully. I'll stop there. <laughs>